My footsteps echo throughout the cement corridor, keeping my focus on my bedroom door as it came into view. I was quiet to open and close my bedroom door. No one in this mansion liked noise. Sound doesn't appeal to the others unless it's screaming coming from our dinner. I wasn't always like this. Hard, cold to the touch. Are you doing that thing again? The voice said from my right in a nonchalant tone. I turned to face the tall, pale, intruding man, his dark haired curls covering his right eye. Can you fuck off, Marcus? I'm busy. With what? Narrating your life to no one but us? He replied, a smirk tugging at the corner of his mouth. I buried you in cement before and I can do it again. I growled at him, irritated from this invasion of privacy. That was pure luck. Luck, my ass. You're slow as hell. I raised my eyebrow, placing my hands on my hips, contemplating where I had placed that machine to dig another hole. Not as slow as one of your long-winded stories, he tried to think to himself quietly. The fuck did you just say? I screamed, feeling my rage show in my eyes. I didn't say anything. Darius wants us downstairs. I was sent up here to ask you to join us. Why? I asked, knowing he was trying in a vain attempt to distract me from remembering where that machine was. If you couldn't tell by now, he is a telepath, as are some of the others, but not everyone. He has a new companion. Do we have to do this bit every time he has a new fuck girl? I groan. As I recall, we did it for you. Bitch, I was no fuck girl. I was an accident. And don't think, never mind, beside the point. I shook my head, then sighed. You're right. Darius went on ten on making you one of us. You're too... His voice trailed off, lifting his right hand to move his curl locks away in a slow, elegant movement. To what? I asked, watching as his eyes looked me up and down, then looked toward my window across the room. Different, he finally answered, shifting in his place against the wall, pushing off against it, and in swift strides towards the door. Damn right I'm different. I'm not like you, standing around, sipping on blood, looking at everyone like you stepped in dog shit. I have a personality, whereas you don't. Don't touch my shit. Yes, that includes my door. I snapped at him, just as his hand grazed the doorknob. Does that include Darius? He asked with a smirk, tilting his head towards me as I pushed past him. I was talking about you, to you. I was looking straight at you. Do you see anyone else around here? I raised my arms, looking around the room, his smirk faltering ever so slightly. That was uncalled for, he said, walking out of the room. Don't evade my privacy next time, and I won't be such a bitch. You know the rules. Fucking knock to enter. Knock to enter. I yell after him as he left me in my room. Malo, please, she's almost here, I heard echo in my head, unsure of who it was. I roll my eyes, closing my door, and proceed down the corridor. The large marble staircase curved to the left, with a thick wooden railing following each side to the main floor. I sat on the railing closest to me and slid down, receiving several glances from the others waiting in the main hall. My shoes clicked against the floor when I jumped down, continuing to click as I walked to the middle of the room. Malo, I heard your narrating. Different this time. It was a nice change, I heard from behind me. I turned around, smiling wide at my favorite one. Patricia, thank you so much. I kept smiling to the tall, platinum blonde, her piercing blue eyes meeting mine. When she breaks eye contact, I follow her line of sight, and I turn my head. I thought, you thought? Who asked you your opinion? Who? Because it wasn't me, that's for damn sure. Keep talking to me, Marcus. See what happens. I'll do it. No one knew you were missing for almost a century. Keep talking, I snapped over my shoulder. I apologize for entering your room without knocking. Forgive me, Marcus replied with a slight bow. I sighed and turned to face him. Maybe I shouldn't have been so hard on him. Why does he make me so angry? It wasn't... It was forever ago, and we often forget rules unless it's given from Darius. I love you. Marcus whispered, staring me in the eye. I search his green ones as they dilate, instantly causing my rage to surface. I know you didn't just try to mind fuck with me. You're a stupid motherfucker, I hissed, 
forcing myself not to start yelling as we all smelled new blood approaching. Marcus turned on his heel and in his usual swift strides walked across the room. Yeah, you better fucking walk away. I'm going to find you after this, Marcus. I hissed again. I felt Patricia stroking my hair to fix misplaced strands. If I had not witnessed your birth, I would have guessed you were a werewolf, Patricia cooed, still fussing with my hair. I just... I hate that guy, I whispered, hearing footsteps along with a stronger scent of new blood. Hmm, don't listen to Marcus. I would have turned you, she whispered with a small, amused smile. Thanks, I smiled. I had always liked Patricia, even before turning, as I was turning and after. You see, being a genetic anomaly, oh right, I tilt my head, keeping my gaze on the new young petite redhead. A tall man in black slacks with a gray long sleeve button shirt followed close behind her, Darius. His black hair tied at the nape of his neck, his black eyes meeting mine. I can feel the pull toward him. Sometimes it hurts to stay where I was when he called to me without a word. The one downside of being turned by an elder. I don't know why he doesn't command me to his side as any other would. The redhead's eyes widened with her realization of how many of us there were in one room. The air filled with the scent of fear, and his gaze fixes on the woman in front of him, finally letting go of his hold on me. There's no need to worry. Come, Darius's gentle smile spread across his face leading her across the room into another part further into the mansion. He's very kind, Patricia whispered once the human was out of sight. Yeah, it's weird, I smiled looking up to her. Have you read the new novels he has in the library? I nodded. I don't know why you waste your time reading. I looked behind Patricia to see my next favorite. Waste my time? All I have is time, I smiled and laughed. Well, I think you should do us all a favor and see Darius, the brown-haired male said with a nod to where Darius and his new companion left. So you can have a late-night snack? He shook his head. Brian, have you seen Marcus? I asked, scanning the room. No, why do you ask? I was going to bury him again, I stated simply. Oh, Brian said with an amused smile. Well, I'll do it when I wake. I'm tired and I need to sleep. My favorites nod, bidding me good night, and I returned to my room. Where was I? Right. I wasn't always like this. Hard, cold of the touch. The hunger in the pit of my stomach always remains. And when I sleep, I dream of nothing. No clouds, grass, trees, people. Not even night terrors. Nothing. It's a faint memory of being human. Malo? I'm so sorry. I don't mean to interrupt you, however. What is it now? We need your help with taking care of someone for us. Can't someone else do it? No, we need your... skill. I hear whirling in my head. I'll be right there, I sighed, then rubbed my eyes. As I was saying, being human is a faint memory now. I remember the swamp. That's where I put that damn machine. Ugh, that was bugging me. Marcus, I know you can hear me. I'm coming for your ass once I take care of this road, I yell in my mind, closing my door behind me yet again. <laughs>